Okay, whenever you're ready, be my guest. All right. Well, Sally, I'm glad we're having another visit. I've yes, missed you. Yes, we are, Bobby. I've we do this you. yearly, don't we? <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. Anyway, my dear, let me tell you, you are marvelous in this film. Oh, thank it's you. It's a great picture, Sally. Thanks. It really is. Yeah, this, I like it. It's your project. Mm -hmm. I co-produced it along with Dan Melnick, um, and it came out of my company, so, along with Dan's. And, um, I'm real pleased with it. Was it a script that was presented to you, or did you have an idea for this kind of story? No, it really came from David Seltzer, the writer and director of the film. Um, it was an odd thing. This was a, a script that had been placed on a shelf, as they say, that well-known shelf at Columbia Pictures, where I have a producing um, deal. And the one of the administrations that was newly in there uh, Steve Sommer, who was then the head of Columbia, was smart enough to go in there and read those things that were on the shelf. He found this project, brought it to Dan and myself. We liked it. We said, let's, let's develop this movie and make it. We then went to David Seltzer, said, please direct it and develop it and turn it into what it was. So we turned it into Punchline, as you see it. And it pretty much is the, the original script then? No, there was a lot of uh, development because the script that we originally read, David Seltzer, I think, had written 10 years before we got our hands on it. So, and it was very different. Uh, the relationship between my character, Lila, and Tom Hanks' character, Stephen Gold, was not really in it at all, just a tiny, a bit, a tiny amount. And we centered the picture around that relationship and um, developed um, their need for one another. You know, Sally, I think a lot of women and, and men will relate to your character because uh, you were a single mother and uh, head of the household, as it were. And now here you're playing this woman who is married, has children, has something, a drive within her that she wants to fulfill. Mm -hmm and uh, trying to get her husband to understand that need mm -hmm. and all. I love the scene where you say, I want to be a wife, I want to be a mother, I want to be a comic. Yeah, yeah. And it was almost, Sally, as if maybe you had said that line in a similar way in your own life. I don't think I ever said that to my children that specifically. I think I probably apologized to them a lot for the the tug and pull that my life put on them and myself and to please bear with me or to appreciate the pluses and don't be too hard on the minuses. I think that there was a lot of that, but I never, I don't, I never sat down and actually succinctly said the things that Lila says in, in, in her life. Um, because also I never made such a clear change in my life the way Lila does. I was always a, a, an actor, a performer, and then my children happened in on it. So they've always been a part of it. You just uh, completed, or are you still working on Steel Magnolias? No, I ju we just wrapped literally a week ago. Okay. Now, did you take the new baby? Yeah. Oh, yes. Absolutely. Sam was down in Louisiana with me the entire time. He's really like the seventh magnolia. <laughs> He's practically in every shot. I just barely got him out of every take. He was there with me the whole time. It was wonderful. It was really a wonderful experience. And uh, then you were with Shirley MacLaine and Dolly Parton. And, and Olympia Dukakis and Daryl Hannah, a young actress named Julia Roberts. Herbert Ross directed it. It was wonderful time. Yeah. If the picture's anywhere near as good as the experience, it could be great. When will that be out? Gee, I don't know. I really don't know. There's so many now that I know enough about producing. There's so many things that, that could uh, that it has to address. You know, it has to get put together, and then what's the right time to release it? I really don't know. At least a year. Anyway, meanwhile, we have punchline. I have to bring up one scene, Sally. That uh, were you there last night? At yes. The, okay. The fast food scene is so marvelous, and the audience clapped and clapped. Yeah. They loved it. Yeah. Now, what did you go through making that scene? Well, I was tired. <laughs> we sh it took about three days, I think, to shoot that sequence. 
and we had to choreograph it, all of it, like a ballet, um, practically count it out one and two and three. And certainly when the two little girls and I were running around, you know, weaving around with each other. And um, it was a lot of fun to do, actually, because it was so silly. But it was exhausting. And I was newly pregnant with Sam, so I was like, has anybody got a soda cracker? Fine, I'll do this again, you know. <laughs> well, we did it. And the funny part was, I don't know how you kept from breaking a leg and getting the pantyhose on. Oh, yes. Everything. Yes. <laughs> Haven't we all done that at one time or another? <laughs> yes. You know, men don't understand this. And David Seltzer, the director, when I went to do that, he said, that just, nobody has done that. I said, trust me, David. <laughs> trust me. Women have done this. <laughs> and then another scene that, that I just loved, and so did the audience. When your character comes in with the new hair, now, how did you all arrive at that look? It was delicious, wasn't it? <laughs> well, it was actually um, what David, the kind of look that David Seltzer had in mind, and we really addressed ourselves to that. It was this uh, far, she goes bouncing around from so many different looks because my character is so insecure as to what is funny and who she should be that she keeps changing herself thinking that that's going to be funny. This is going to answer what I don't have inside myself. I'm going to change the color of my hair. I'm going to dress like this. And at, at that point, she says, I'll be totally different. And aren't, haven't there been times in your life when you put yourself in the hands of someone who acts like they know what they're doing, a hairdresser or somebody, and says, trust me, I'll make a whole new you. And you go, holy smoke, what have I done? <laughs> and that's what happens to Lila. <laughs> Well, it works. It works really well. So, um, in your own life now, things are happy and wonderful and... and Exhausting. I, I, I just got home four days ago and I've been working on this picture. I went to New York and worked on the film and I went to Toronto and took the baby and the baby and the nanny and my mother and I have been running around. I'm, I'm, I basically don't know which end is up. I'm exhausted. And I'm happy. It's a great, fun life. I can't wait to see what happens next. <laughs> I hope a full night's sleep is in store somewhere. <laughs> and Alan is working on a picture or what? Yes, Alan has been, he just finished Fletch 2 and another movie this summer. So we were a very busy family and he was trying to come into Louisiana to see his baby every weekend. So. And life goes on at the Greisman life family. Life goes on. Yes. Sally, again, the picture is great. I know it will do well. It just oh, I, I just think the word of mouth will be sensational. On thanks, it. Bobby. I hope so. Yes, and you're great in it. Thank you. Good to see you. Nice to see you. It really is wonderful.